Hi, so in this video, we will be looking at the tax paper of June 2024, the GST part. Now, the GST part in the new syllabus comes for around 40 marks. Let's take a quick overview of the particular thing. Okay, so now the very first question they have asked of Majumdar Industries. Now, this is a trend where they ask a really uh, long question. Okay, so the question goes on. We should directly come to the direct question what it is there as a GST consultant you are required to answer the following question determine the input tax credit available for the month of December by giving brief explanation for the treatment of the various items now your ITC is covered from your section 16 to section 21 okay let's see they are asking to calculate the ITC so here when you see they have given you all those uh, purchases and all this so let's read engage industry has given the following information relating to ITC for the month of December first purchase of raw materials received in two equal installment the first one was received in December and the second installment was received in January so the total amount is 5 lakh 50 now from here if you go to see what is happening is we are calculating the ITC for the month of December. So since the second installment was received after December, that is in January 2024, the that credit cannot be taken in December because the goods have to be received to receive or to get the ITC as given in your section uh, 16 subsection 2. Okay, so in two equal installments, so only half of this credit can be taken eligible the other half will not be allowed to be taken since it is in the next month next purchase of consume uh, consumables delivered directly to the job worker only invoice was received by the firm so again this credit is also allowed so we have told that please send the goods to the job worker we will pay for it okay so the invoice has been received by us so this is under section 19 goods sent to job worker credit is available to the principal next is uh, there is your purchase of a bus seating capacity is 18 okay for transportation of employees so credit of it if you go to see in your section 17 subsection 5 which talks about block credits in that they said if it is uh, you know up till 13 you know it is not allowed but above 13 seater uh, vehicles are allowed so credit of this is also available next uh general insurance in respect of motor cars now again when you read section 17 subsection 5 motor cars are ineligible okay and once that is ineligible then the insurance or any kind of repair work on the car is also ineligible so this will be ineligible okay next is payment to made to the abc caterers for providing breakfast and lunch so very simple this is not eligible as directly given in section 17 subsection 5 okay so once you do this you will come to know you add this this take half of this and that is your itc that is available now let's read the next question in it now what are they saying state the time limit for return of semi-finished goods sent to job workers including mold size given to them and what when would such movement be treated as supply of goods so which section is this in your itc it is your section 19 now it's a direct question that they have asked a very simple question also that time limit for goods when they are sent to the job worker so what do they say that listen whenever we send the principal sends the goods to the job worker okay these should be returned back within a specific t period of time so when these are inputs now these are inputs so the time period is a uh, one year and if these would have been capital goods it is three years and if it is molds dyes digs and fixtures then there is no time limit okay specified so when would the movement be treated as supply that if it is not received within this much time then it is deemed to be a supply then state the conditions to be satisfied by Majumdar industry for seeking separate registration for different place of business within the same state. 
Now what is happening is we are asking for different GST registration for different places of business within the same state. So let's say if I am located in Maharashtra, in Maharashtra this business one place I want and a business two, branch one, branch two. This I want a separate GSTN number and here also I want a separate GSTN number. Is it allowed? So the answer is yes, it is permitted. Okay, now what happens? There is some a concept called as business vertical. Okay, a business vertical is a separate segment of the business. You can register it separately. Here the risk the return, the customer, the marketing, everything is different from each other. For example, if this like I had give, uh, you know, there is an example of ITC. Now ITC is in the hotel business as well as it is in the business of cigarettes. Now both can be situated in Maharashtra. They can get separate registration. It is allowed. Details have to be given and then accordingly uh, a transfer from year to year will be treated as a sale as well. So, you know, you can build your answer accordingly. So seeking a registration, it is permitted and then you have to give all the details as you would have given for registration. Next, what, uh, when should the e-way bill be generated? Okay, salient feature. So now it's a very direct question that they have asked. This is from your rule uh, 138. Okay which is a talk of e-way bill. Now e-way bill is a transport document which is generated before the transit of the goods whenever the value is consignment value is 50,000 or more then an e-way bill has to be generated whether it is inter or intrastate it has to be done then you will give uh, salient features e-way bill one okay it has two parts one is a vehicle number one is part A is all the details of everyone and the goods and uh, this is the details of your vehicle is in part B. So accordingly, you can give all the details, etc. Next, what is the time of supply in the following case? Now, time of supply is from your section 12 to section 14, which talks about time of supply. Now, each one has to be independently seen, but it was a very uh, you know expected topic that time of supply do come and it has come for around five marks next we go to see is what from the following supply of service is a taxable service or exempt so state which of the following is taxable or exempt with reference to the cgst provision so very direct question they have given and a student can just get five marks by saying whether it is taxable or exempt so let's quickly see what is it ABC limited sold a division engaged in the manufacture of cement okay concern for this much on a uh, slum sale now whenever a undertaking like D merger is happening and it is sold as a going concern means LNT transferred uh, you know actually D merged one of its division to Aditya Birla Group. So that was like a slum sale of the business. So here it is exempt from GST. It is exempt from GST. Okay. That was called as Grasim now. So this was just a very simple uh, thing. The next is Moon Private Limited paid rupees 50,000 to a Pandit for conducting a puja. Okay. Now this also is exempt. Okay. This is also exempt because uh, all the exemptions, if you see, there's the exemption notification that has to be seen. And in that they have given you which on uh, supplies on which GST is exempt from tax. Then if we see your uh, Ajay Enterprises paid 2 lakh rupees to this incubator services, total turnover was uh, this and the agreement between the party was entered on uh, the first 2021 so again incubator services are also exempt okay if they are registered etc so if this is a registered incubator so what is an incubator they help entrepreneurs grow so services to them are exempt okay uh, if certain conditions are fulfilled now coming to the next thing is 
महेश अगेन महेश अवेल सर्विसेस ऑफ ऋषि फॉर फ्यूमिगेशन फॉर फ्यूमिगेशन इन इट्स वेयर हाउस वेर एग्रीकल्चरल गुड्स आर स्टोर्ड एंड पेड रुपीज इज ना अगेन एनी सर्विसेस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एग्रीकल्चरल गुड्स आर ऑल्सो एग्जाम नेक्स्ट वी सी द नेक्स्ट वन इज एन आर्टिस्ट ओके मेड अ परफॉर्मेंस एट अ थिएटर ऑन ओकेजन ऑफ फाउंडर्स डे सेलिब्रेशन एंड गॉट पेड वन लैक एटी फाइव थाउजेंड कंसिडरेशन टू द आर्टिस्ट फॉर द ग्रुप बाय द नेम ऑफ मेगा थिएटर्स नाउ वॉट इज दिस इट इज अ थियर एन आर्टिस्ट लैरी एंगेज द आर्टिस्ट फॉर परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ अ फोक आर्ट ओके सो देर इज एन आर्टिस्ट ही हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एंड ही वॉज पेड दिस मच सो नाउ इट विल बी टैक्सेबल सी दे हैव गिवेन दैट वेन एवर एन आर्टिस्ट इज देयर डूइंग दिस ऑफ देर इज अ लिमिट ऑफ वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज बियॉन्ड दैट इट बिकम्स टैक्सेबल नेक्स्ट दे आर सींग फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ सप्लाई ओके विथ रेफरेंस टू द provisions in gst so very simple your uh, section number 15 talks about valuation read with the valuation rules okay let's see the state government authorized a lottery where the face value per ticket was 650 640 the price notified in the official gazette was 450 so what is the value of supply so what they have said on which the see first there will be a value on that value gst is levied so here for this lottery purpose what they are saying it is whatever is the transaction value that is the face value or the price notified by government by government whichever is higher so which is the value on which gst will be levied it is 640 okay next okay so the value for calculation of gst will be 640 next is a money exchanger exchanged 10000 dollars sold by a customer at rupees 80 usd the rbi reference rate for this was 78 now again they have asked with respect to foreign currency what is the gst that will be levied so again very simple they say a difference between the rbi reference rate and the actual rate is to be taken so when we take 80 80 minus 78 you get 2 rupees okay rupees 2 so this rupees 2 is per dollar so like that you have how many dollars 10000 dollars so it will become 20000 dollars will be the value the value okay this is rupees 2 per dollar now the next is again a air travel agency a air travel agency charge rupees 60000 as basic fare okay so this was the basic fare rupees 3000 charges and uh, fees so basic fare rupees 3000 as charges and fees and rupees 2000 for taxes for uh, domestic booking so what is the value so when you read the valuation rules they say the in case of air travel air travel okay they first tell you what is the value so the value is always the basic fare basic fare is the value and on that they have said 5% etc that is to calculate the gst so the basic fare will be rupees 60000 so you will not take this into regard because it is not required only they say that the value will be the basic fare that is there next x and company supplied a mobile handset for 30000 along with exchange with a old handset so you go you give your old phone and you have to pay 30000 and you will get your new phone the price of the new mobile phone without the exchange would be 35000 so obviously this is your open market value so therefore the value that we will take is rupees 35000 because here you in the above thing it is price and money and money is worth so when in such cases we will have to go through the rules and the rules they are saying the open market value is available we will directly take that next 
X Limited supplied goods to his agent, who is also acting as an agent for other suppliers. Now the goods of like kind were supplied by the agent at a price of rupees uh, five thousand rupees on the day of supply. Another independent supplier supplied the same goods at a price of rupees four thousand six hundred per unit. Now can you tell me this is from where? Now this is coming and the example is also exactly the same. Numbers are also almost the same. Your uh, that has been given. Okay. So if you see your valuation rule, rule number 29, what do they talk about that when principal has supplied the goods to the agent. Okay. So Y limited has supplied the goods to the agent. So what is the valuation? So the valuation that they are saying that we will take first the uh, subsequently supplied by the agent. So the 90% of the price supplied to by agent or the open market value or the price sold of other things. So here the agent is selling for 5000. So it will be either 90% of 90% of 5000 or 4600. Okay. These two. So the option whichever is lower obviously the person would want that to be taken. So at the option. So ideally it is. 4600 but at the option of the supplier he can take 90% of this amount so he will choose whichever is lower because once the value is lower the GST will also be lower okay then they have asked the uh, direct sum of customs act okay now your customs act sums is for around 5 marks what they have asked Cal find out the accessible value of imported goods. So we are importing the goods. They are asking find out the custom duty or uh, custom. They are not asking the custom duty. They are asking find out the accessible value. So let's see. He has imported from USA. So cost of machine at the factory of the ex exported country. Okay. Cost of machine at the factory. So at his factory, this is there. So we will take this into consideration. Transport charges by the exporter from his factory to the port of shipment. So from his factory to the port, this much charges are this will also be included. Handling charges for loading the machine. Now once it has reached, then they want to load it. This will also be added. Then designing charges for the machine paid in USA. So designing charges, everything will be paid. Now only one thing is there specifically given in the rules that buying commission is not to be taken. So you will ignore buying commission. Once you do that, then air freight to India and insurance, it could not be ascertained. So very simple. First, you will add all these figures. Okay. 5,000 plus 3,000 plus 500 plus 9,500. So how much you get? This is uh, 10,000. 60,000, 63,000. So 63,000, okay, dollars is your FOB value. Foot on board means to come till, uh, uh, foot on board means till there. This much is the, uh, the price. Plus, now you will add cost of transportation. Okay, now you will add the cost of, so FOB value plus cost of transport plus cost of insurance will be taken and you will get your accessible value very simple so once you got your fob value now let's look at cost of air freight now air freight they have told you actual or 20 percent of fob okay whichever is lower will be taken so you will see what is the actual uh, air freight this is actual and 20 percent of fob whichever is lower you will take and insurance when it cannot be ascertained you will take 1.125 percent okay of fob value once you do that you will get your cost of transport and your insurance you will get your accessible value now this will be in dollars okay so which rate will you take now they have given you because we have to pay in rupees right we need accessible value in rupees so you will see that the rbi exchange rate is given one dollar is rupees 
81 and here they've given CBIC rate is uh, on the date of filing the bill of entry is this much. So which rate should we take RBI rate or CBIC rate? So obviously we are doing customs act. We know RBI rate is there, but specifically customs authority have given the exchange rate. So we will always take 80. So whatever you get is the accessible value in dollars. You will multiply it with rupees 80. Okay. Exchange rate and you will get your accessible value in rupee. So it was fairly easy sum. Student could have got five marks. Okay. Now why it is easy because the same sum we have done in our lectures. Now what question they have asked here. Abdut company is manufacturing plastic items supplied of 10,000 units to Khan. Okay. So he supplied 10,000 units to Khan. It usually gives 1% discount up to uh, 5,000 units, 2% uh, discount for above 5 to 10,000. Okay. So as you order more, you get a discount. As a special case, he got 4% discount. Okay. Since the order was placed in one lot of 10,000. So this guy Khan got a 4% discount. Let's move ahead. This discount was based on an agreement entered into between the parties and after completion of the total supply. Okay. Now what happened is it is after completion of the supply. It is not shown in the invoice. Explain how the supplier and receiver could deal with the discount in this regard. So 4% discount he has got and there, there was an agreement made one, but it was made after completion of your supply of units and it was not even shown in the invoice. So again, how do you deal with it? So your section 15 subsection three, okay. Talks about discount. Now here specifically since the discount once it is reflected in the invoice like now normally when we do then it is allowed to be deducted and the value will be excluding the discount. Now this is a case of post sale discount. Now the sale has happened. Sale has been done and then so it is in the part in the B section 15 subsection 3B post sale discount. So there are some conditions that Later on, I sold it at XYZ and later I realized I want to give you a discount. So in that case, what are the conditions? So first they say that there has to be a prior agreement. So was there a prior agreement before the sale that listen in future, if you meet these conditions, then I will give you a discount one. Okay. And it should be linked to the invoice to the invoice. If this, these conditions are fulfilled. Then, then what will happen? Then I can issue a credit note. A credit note will be issued. For example, if I'm giving a discount of 10,000 rupees. So credit note will include the value of discount plus the GST on it. So 10,000 plus the GST, this will be issued and will be given to him. The dealer can then use this particular uh, credit note provided he has not taken credit on the uh, GST of the full amount if he is taken he has to reverse so that ITC of the extra amount he has to reverse if he has taken so this is some points now from here you uh, since it's of three marks you can mention the entire law and say that he can issue a credit note but one very technical thing we'll have to see as per what ICSI guideline answers are there because they have written that after completion of the supply, the agreement was made after completion agreement was made after completion. Now in section 15 subsection 3b, they are saying that the agreement or this should come before or at the time of supply. So ideally, if these conditions are not met, the discount cannot be uh, the GS, the credit the uh, discount amount GST can so you can issue a credit note for the discount amount that is fine but the GST on it will not be allowed to be reduced so you can mention all the scenarios and give it so then you are safe from all ends similar question has been asked 
that deepak supplied uh, biscuits to arnold and company regularly it supplied 10000 packets at this much 20 rupees due to financial crisis he could not make the payment so later it was negotiated and the parties agreed to pay this much okay and this made a payment accordingly on this date the, he issued a credit note on the difference amount on the same day assume that the cg uh, gst rate is this much determine the taxable value of supply now again you can make it like a theory question and you can say that these conditions have to be fulfilled that a prior agreement should be there otherwise this credit discount cannot be given gst so understand what is the thing that i had sold at 1 lakh rupees then i decided yaar let me give me 10% discount post sale i want to give a 10% discount so 10% of this comes to 10000 rupees so obviously on this also as we have gst here it will come out to you know 1 lakh 18000 so here also i'll say i'm giving a discount of 10000 so the gst on the discount amount also i'm reversing because the dealer only didn't get it a uh, 10000 is refunding it so obviously the tax with respect to this also will be refunded now if the conditions of section 5 now understand this if the condition of section 15 sub section 3 are not complied then can i issue a credit note answer is yes you can issue a credit note for the value but not for the gst amount so if the conditions of law for i for this not allowed so i can issue a credit note but that credit note will not include the gst amount why because you didn't fulfill the condition if you want you had given taken 1 lakh rupees it was supposed to go in your pocket you can refund him 10000 that is fine but gst don't touch till you comply with the condition so similar points have been mentioned here next next when we go lamp uh, commenced a business in retail and electronic goods it supplied registration it applied for registration under the regular scheme the uh, was liable to pay this much its turnover okay ended 31st march 2024 was 72 lakhs it decided to opt for composition scheme if the itc available was this much okay cgst credits were available uh, your okay your credit balance uh, was available this much state the procedure to be followed by lam for change over to composition scheme now again composition scheme if you go to see is in your section number 10 okay now this has to be read with your uh, section number 18 okay where they are saying that listen you want to opt for composition scheme then you can do though there is a gst cmp form 2 for opting for so with this you can opt for your composition scheme okay this application has to be filed before the uh, start of the financial year he is eligible for your gst comp uh, com to opt for composition scheme because his turnover is not exceeding 1 lakh 50000 rupees okay 1 crore 50 lakh 150 lakh he is not exceeding so he can definitely opt and the credits available okay one day prior now this is given in section 18 that if it is one day prior if you are opting for co composition scheme then all your credits which are there one day prior have to be paid okay this has to be paid to the government <clears throat> uh which are there in your available in a credit has to be paid so that is it simple so one day prior what credits are available you have to reverse or pay it to the government now <clears throat> b homes was planning to construct a 10 story building complex in pune he obtained permission for the same another firm j construction constructing six stories since the 10 story building may affect the ventilation of the flats he approached this place and told proposing giving up the construction of four flat for a agreed uh, compensation of rupees 75 lakhs so they told him that listen you don't construct so many four flats i will pay you compensation of 75 for not doing an act and he received the compensation so 
examine whether the aforesaid compensation will attract GST liability answer is yes and compute the GST liability so on 75 lakhs you will have 9 CGST and HGST okay conditions to be complied with also so what are the conditions that a proper uh, invoice has to be created agreement has to be created the the uh, the invoice should specifically be linked the invoice uh, the agreement and the invoice have to be linked with each other that in pursuant to this agreement we are paying you so much and then these are the details okay and this then the uh, other conditions is simple that you have to file your gst or 3b the last one is so in your customs this time they have asked for 10 marks 5 marks sum and this question that they have asked state with reasons whether the following questions are true or false under the customs act customs area includes a warehouse answer is yes true okay so what is a customs area it includes everything warehouse is also customs warehouse also in customs control so it includes it customs station now when i say customs station does not include a international courier terminal so this is false okay this is the case it is false why because in the definition of custom station only they have written that it is a international courier terminal is included uh, international post offices are included customs means what in india and that side also so everything is included custom station including not only of india but also of international uh, international uh, custom stations are also included okay so with this i can say that the gst part was very simple okay and uh, a student could definitely clear the paper on basis of this thank you